Hello and welcome to the analysis of the Hindu newspaper dated December 26, 2022. In this video, we are going to talk about two important newspaper articles. Now, these articles have been taken from the Hindu newspaper, so they are going to be very important, very significant for the civil services examination. So, do watch this video till the end. So, with this, let's now head to the first important newspaper article. Now, this particular article talks about what is known as Justice Department and the tenure of the judges. So this article becomes very important for the GS paper too, that is judiciary. So let's deep dive into this particular newspaper article. Now this article says that increasing the retirement age of the Supreme Court and High Court could extend the years of service of non-performed judges and it also might have a cascading effect with government employees raising a similar demand. This is this is statement is basically uh, said by the Department of Justice which, which comes under the law ministry, right? And this statement has been made towards the parliamentary panel which was seeking for the increase in the retirement age of the supreme court and the high court judges now this panel has raised two things right first is the extension of the years of uh, service of the non-performing judges will have an impact on the judicial system and at the same time it will raise similar demand from the government employees right so it is very highly important to understand how the judges of the Supreme Court and the High Courts uh, come into being, what is collegium system and we are also going to discuss what is the age of the or the tenure of the Supreme Court and the High Court judges. But before that, we are going to discuss this particular matter and how it has come into being. Now in July, what happened is that Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju had informed Parliament that there was no proposal to increase the retirement age of the Supreme Court and High Court judges, right? Now, the Department of Justice made a presentation before the Parliamentary Panel on Personal Law and Justice that was chaired by BJP MP and former Bihar Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi. Now, this particular panel uh, talked about something called the, uh, the possibility of increasing the retirement age of the High Court and Supreme Court judges. So, the Department in the Ministry of Law and Justice made the presentation that compro comprised the details of judicial processes and reforms including on the possibility of increasing the retirement age of the High Court and the Supreme Court judges. And this is how basically the this particular matter came into being. Now, if we talk about the present tenure of the judges, then it is 65 years for the Supreme Court judge and it is basically 62 years for the High Court judge. Now, this particular thing also required amendment in the 100 uh, or it talked about the amendment in this particular age in the 114th amendment bill. Now, it was basically introduced in 2010 to increase the retirement judge uh, age of the high court judges to 65 years. So, basically it is 62 years, right? So, this, uh, this age was going to be increased to 65 years under the 114th amendment bill. But this particular... Uh, resolution or this but sorry this particular bill did not come into being so it was not taken up for consideration in parliament and lapsed with the dissolution of the 15th Lok Sabha right so this is the present tenure of the judges which is 65 years of the for the Supreme Court and the 62 years for the High Court judges now let's talk about the major pointers or the arguments which have been presented by the Department of Justice now, the first point that the Department of Justice has said that said is that enhancing the age of the retirement might extend benefits in terms of extended years of service in certain non-deserving cases and lead to non-performing and underperforming judges to continue. So, all the underperforming and the non-performing judges will, uh, uh, their appointment will also increase, their tenure will also increase. So, this will lead to inefficiency in the judicial system. And apart from it, the enhancing the age of the retirement might extend benefits in terms of extended years of service in certain non deserving sorry this is the repetition now it would be inappropriate if increase in the retirement age is considered along with other measures to ensure transparency accountability in the appointments to the higher judiciary an effort to fill up existing existing vacancies in the district and the subordinate judiciary and bringing down areas of the cases pending in the courts now the cases pending in the courts is the main issue right so we need to focus on that instead of increasing the age of the judges we need to fill up the existing vacancies is the most probable solution regarding the pendency of the cases this is what 
the department of justice says now apart from it it also says that it said the increasing the retirement age may deprive tribunals of having retired judges as presiding officers or judicial members so what happens is that after the 62 years which is the age of the high court and tenure of the high court judges and 65 years which is the uh, tenure of the supreme court judges right so now if you increase the uh, age of uh, or tenure of the judges then they will grow old now the 62 year old uh, high court judge when he retires or retired high court judge can serve in the tribunals if they reach the certain age when they are not uh, they are not very fully efficient then it will lead to what vacancies in the tribunals we will not get the judges for the tribunals and apart from it enhancement of the retirement age of the judges will have a cascading effect as the government employees at the central and state level PSUs may raise similar demand in this case and that is why the retirement age of the supreme court judges and the high court judges must not be increased according to the department of the justice now this is all about the uh, this is all about the tenure of the judges let's also understand how the appointment of the judges happen because this issue is also important so appointment of judges basically happens through a system known as collegium system and it is a system of appointment and transfer of judges that has evolved through judgments of the supreme court and not by the act of parliament or by provision of the constitution any act of the parliament is not responsible for this particular system the system is evolved through some of the cases now these cases are three in number first judges case second judges case and the third judges case so the first judges case which happened in 1981 it declared that primacy of the chief justice of india's recommendation on judicial appointments whatever the chief justice of india says that it cannot be refused right and the ruling gave the executive primacy over the judiciary in uh, appointments for the next 12 years now after the 12 years a new case was formed which was known as second judges case because this particular thing was also only for the 12 years period right first judges case was applicable only for the 12 years so after 12 years in 1993 came about the second judges case and in this case particular case supreme court introduced the collegium system now collegium system uh, was basically about the consultation and it really meant concurrence right and it added that it was not the CGI's individual opinion and two senior most judges opinion in the Supreme Court also matters. So collegium system was formed in which CJI plus two senior most judges of the Supreme Court were part of the collegium system. Now the judiciary felt that two senior most judges is a somewhat uh, can be somewhat controversial right. So it increased this particular number to 5. So presently we have CJI plus 4 of his senior most colleagues. That is we have a 5 member body in order to appoint the judges. Right. So now the appointment of the judges is basically headed by the CGI and comprises four uh, other senior most judges of the uh, of the Supreme Court and the High Court Collegium is led by the Chief Justice of the of that particular High Court and four other senior most judges of that particular court. Now the names are recommended by the Collegium in the High Court uh, and it reaches the government only after the approval by the CGI and the SC Collegium. So the SC Collegium basically decides that the names are going to be recommended to the government for the appointment or not. And when the appointment or the, this particular recommendation is sent to the government, it is full and final. And the government has only one role. It only checks the uh, checks the background of that particular judge only. So judges of the other uh, of the higher judiciary are appointed only through the collegium system and the government has a role only after names have been decided by the collegium. So the government's role is limited to getting an inquiry conducted by the intelligence bureau if a lawyer is to be elevated as a judge in the high court or the supreme court. Only when a lawyer is elevated to the post of judge in the high court or supreme court then the government's role is regarding the conduction of the inquiry regarding it checking the background and all of it now it can also raise objections and see clarifications regarding the collegium's choices but now the government can seek uh, the uh, clarification regarding the collegium choices but if 
the government collegium reiterates it says that no this is what the person we want is the supreme court judge or the high court judge then the government is also bound under the constitution bench judgments to appoint them as judges right so this is basically how the appointment of the judges happens in the high court as well as the supreme court so what we have discussed we have discussed the appointment of the judges we have also talked about the tenure of the judges we have also talked about what is the matter regarding the this particular statement which have been raised by the department of justice right and we have talked about what are the main points they have laid down uh, in order to support their argument of not increasing the age of the judges right or tenure of the judges so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article let's now head to the next important newspaper article so this particular newspaper article talks about what is known as cpcb that is control board central pollution control board right and it talks about its particular report it has produced a report which talks about the polluted river stretches now this particular article becomes important for the gs paper 3 that is environmental pollution or the environment subject right so this particular article talks about what is known as polluted stretches and it says that india's rivers have fallen from or the polluted stretches have fallen from 351 in 2018 to 311 in 2022 and though the number of the most polluted stretches most polluted stretches has practically unchanged says this particular report which has been presented by central pollution control board right and the central pollution control board is responsible for controlling the pollution in the country and it presents some of the reports which are significant for the government policies right so this particular report becomes a very important very significant for the civil services examination because the data which is presented in this particular report can be used directly in the main answer writing as well as it can be asked in the prelims as well right so the uh, identification of the polluted stretch according to this report happens through what is known as bio biochemical oxygen demand now if it exceeds 3 mg per liter it is identified as a pollu polluted locations and if this happens in two or more polluted locations then that particular stretch of the river is known as polluted river stretch let me repeat it we have the concept which is what is known as biochemical oxygen demand now this particular thing that that is bod exceeds 3 mg per liter then that particular location is identified as polluted uh, polluted location and if the polluted locations are identified in two or more areas or in two or more uh, locations then that particular stretch is known as polluted river stretch now a bod less than 3 mg per liter means the river stretch is fit for outdoor bathing and it will not come under the in uh, it will not not come under the polluted river stretch right basically so now the uh, water bodies which uh, or the river stretches which have bod which exceeds 3 mg per liter are basically uh, divided into five categories this is priority 1 priority 2 3 4 and 5 in priority 1 it exceeds bod exceeds 30 mg per liter in the priority 2 we have 20 to 30 mg per liter and in the similar fashion it keeps on decreasing and in priority 5 we have 3 to 6 mg per liter right of bod now if the bod is in priority 1 then that water stretch is most polluted and if we have a water stretch in priority 5 it is least polluted right we are not concerned about the priority 5 we are mostly concerned about what is known as priority 5 and if it if we see this particular report or the data from this particular report then it basically mentions that in 2018 there uh, it mentions about the comparison between the 2018 and 2022 data right so this particular table represents uh, the comparison in in that regard so you can basically see that priority 1 in priority 1 there were 45 river stretches in 2018 now it has increased to 46 in priority 2 it has remained unchanged that is 16 in priority 3 we have seen a reduction right earlier it was 43 river stretches in 2018 in 2022 we have seen it uh, we have come down to 39 
in priority 4, 72, now it is 65, in priority 5, 175, and now it is 145. So basically we can see that there is a reduction in this particular case that is priority 3, 4, and 5, which says that, which leads to the conclusion that the changes happen in, happened in the priority 3, priority 4, and the priority 5. But basically in the priority 1 and priority 2, it remained unchanged. And in the, in the case of priority 1, it has increased to 46. One river stretch has increased. All right. So this is worrisome in this regard. Apart from it, the priority 3, priority 4, priority 5, the data is very clean, very good, right? And if we talk about the state-wise data, then Gujarat and UP contribute to the most amount of river stretches in the priority 1, which is 6. And if we talk about the individual data of Uttar Pradesh, then there, there are 17 river stretches which are, uh, which are polluted in nature. And in Maharashtra, we have seen 55 river stretches which are polluted. In Madhya Pradesh, we have 19 river stretches which are polluted. Bihar, 18. Kerala, 18. Karnataka, 17. But we have, the most concerning is the case of Gujarat and UP, which has basically 6 river stretches which are priority 1. That is BOD of more than 36 milligram per liter or 30 sorry 30 milligram per liter which is very worrisome so what is the government doing regarding it so basically the government has come up with a scheme or it has been implementing the scheme which is known as namami gange which is a central sector scheme and now it has 406 projects which includes 176 projects for sewage treatment of 5270 mld and a sewer network of 5,214 kilometers have been sanctioned at the cost of 32,898 crore against which sewage treatment capacity of 1,858 MLD has been created so far. Now, CPCB in its report added that the overall decrease in the net number of the identified polluted stretches which happened in the case of P3, P4 and P5 has been attributed to the improvement in water quality and that can be attributed to efforts done by the for the infrastructure development for the pollution control so namami gange we can conclude is a very good scheme which is a central uh, sector scheme and it must be implemented in mission mode projects if we want to see the priority one and priority two river stretches becoming less polluted all right so this is it regarding this particular so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article and this is it for the day. Thank you from my side. Do like and share the video and subscribe to this channel. Have a good day. Bye.